Hello, my name is Anne Iveson and I'm here at the seventh symposium uh, from the Collet Institute of Private Equity entitled Battle of the Asset Classes. I'm joined this afternoon by George Anson, who is Managing Director of Harbourvest and is currently, for one more week, Chairman of the EVCA. We've just had a very interesting panel on um, how GPs are diversifying and trends in new asset classes within the PE structure. And I'd like to ask you, George, if I may, what about the LPs? And obviously you're an LP as yourself. Um, are LPs going with large tickets now or are they coming to you with large tickets and expecting you to do the um, allocation into these dis different asset classes for them or are they doing it themselves? Um, and Well, it, it's a good question and I think the answer is, well, there are different answers. <clears throat> Certainly, but the investor behaviour that I would observe out there is that there are a number of investors who believe that they have the people, the time and the resources to be able to select the best of breed in individual markets. Um, and of course, you know, to deploy large amounts of capital, that can be very time intensive and, and very costly in the end. Um, I think where we've got to in the maturity of the private equity world today though, with so many new funds being raised year in, year out, is that some investors, particularly those with large capital allocations now, are gravitating towards their larger managers, the more experienced managers, that have different products to offer. And what I mean by that is large buyout, maybe special opportunities, uh, private credit, um, real estate, um, other things that are sort of related, uh, you know, tactical asset type of funds, where the GP might even offer it for a very large commitment to pool the returns from that. So that what the investor gets is the knowledge uh, and the experience that they have had with this particular GP, assuming it's been, mm. I'm sure, very positive, um, but with the GP in return, then offering to them an aggregation, if you like, of the returns from all those different product lines they have, <clears throat> so that the client doesn't feel like they're getting three good ones and one bad one sure. all mixed up together. They're willing to pool the returns. I think as, as you go through that, um, I think that's probably true of the organizations that are very short-staffed, they perhaps don't have the compensation structures in place to be able to retain many people to deploy private equity. And so this provides for them, I think, a, a great solution. Okay, thank you very much. I think it's very interesting to see how the private equity firms then have adapted their strategy. I think it shows, or does it show, that the importance of brand, culture and governance within the GP and the fact that, as I said earlier, that they have adapted their strategy. I couldn't foresee many financial services companies becoming so client orientated within a relatively short space of time. Yes, well, <clears throat> if you take our firm as an example, um, when we started 30 years ago, we had one product which invested globally and it invested in all the types of investment strategies that we have right now. Today we have over 16 different products which are either sectorally or geographically diverse and that's a direct result of what our investors want from us. Mm. Um, we're responding to the marketplace and we're evolving, which I think you've got to do if you want to continue to survive. Thank you very much indeed for joining me today. Thank you. Pleasure.